But what's also incredible about this time period is we do have small lights of wonder. We do actually have an incredible redemption story. And that's a story of Nathan Bedford Forrest. If you recall, he's one of those most controversial figures throughout all of Southern and Confederate history. Someone who had been a slave trader. Someone who certainly was a slave owner. Someone who was very aggressive in battle and is sometimes accused of doing unjust things in war. Well, Forrest, after the war, had a conversion experience. He suddenly felt that his life, which had been a great life, had been a life of incredible vision and achievements, he suddenly felt that it must have eternal purposes. And so Forrest would spend the remaining years of his life trying to reconcile the African-American community to the rest of the South, really trying to reconcile that whole issue of civil rights. And so it was Forrest who was invited to the city of Memphis, where he resided. He was invited there to a group of African Americans to give a speech before them. Upon achieving the podium, he was given a bouquet of flowers. And this is what he says. Ladies and gentlemen, I accept these flowers as a memento of reconciliation between our races of the southern states. I accept it more particularly as it comes from an African lady. For if there is anyone on God's earth who loves the ladies that I believe, I believe it is myself. This was followed by immense applause and laughter. I came here with the jeers of some white people who think that I am doing wrong. I believe I can exert some influence and do much to assist the people in strengthening fraternal relations and shall do all in my power to elevate every man to depress none. I want to elevate you to take positions in law offices, in stores, on farms, and wherever you are capable of going. I have not said anything about politics today. I don't propose to say anything about politics. You have a right to elect whom you please. Vote for the man you think best, and I think when that is done, you and I are free men. Do as you consider right and honest in electing men for office. I did not come here to make you a long speech, although invited to do so by you. I'm not much of a speaker, and my business prevented me from preparing myself. I came to meet you as friends and welcome you. I want you to come near to us. When I can serve you, I will do so. We have but one flag, one country. Let us stand together. We may differ in color, but not in sentiment. Many things have been said about me which are wrong and which white and black persons here who stood by me through the war can contradict. Go to work, be industrious, live honestly and act truly, and when you are oppressed, I will come to your relief. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for this opportunity you have afforded me to be with you and to assure you that I am with you in heart and in hand. Really, the South, after the Civil War and after the Reconstruction, needed more men like Forrest. There were some like him, but unfortunately, there were not quite enough.